So, for the record, uh, go ahead, um, who are you and what do you do? My name is Sarah Langworthy and uh, I have a channel called Developmental Enthusiast uh, where I talk a lot about child psychology, um, getting into graduate school, what graduate school is like, um, and, and issues that face children, youth, and families. Awesome. So what was the thing that got you to start putting educational stuff on YouTube? I come from an academic background, um, so I have my PhD in developmental psychology, and I was I knew pretty early I didn't want to do the traditional researcher track, um, but I was really passionate about making science and research accessible for people who are in the field and who want to use it, um, and who it could benefit. And so I pretty early on saw myself going in a direction that was more along research and science communication, um, and, and trying to figure out how are the ways what are the best ways to get information out to people in ways that they can actually use it? And so I saw YouTube as an opportunity for that. Um, I watched a lot of YouTube. I was a you know, big, big nerd fighter uh, fan, uh, and so I, I saw that as a potential method for uh, getting information out to a lot of people very, very quickly and in ways that they might be able to use or at least find it interesting enough so that they could go find more information if they wanted to. Cool. Cool. So. Um, I know you're associated with an institution, mm -hmm. um, University of, you said Michigan? Minnesota. Minnesota. That's right, St. Yep. Paul. <laughs> yes. Good old Prairie Home Companion. <laughs> um, what do you think are some of, like, do you get any support from the institution to do YouTube stuff? Um, it's, it's been interesting. So I, I have my own personal channel, uh, which is a developmental enthusiast, and that's sort of separate, but I also am running, um, our, our little center has their, our own YouTube channel and I'm actually in charge of running that. And so one of the things that we've done that's been very exciting and I think is, is an interesting method moving forward is that we have a lot of older professional development content. You know, you'll, you'll see people post their entire lectures online and you don't always get great engagement on hour and a half long lectures. So what we started to do is um, cut those down into smaller bite-sized chunks and um, edit them together in interesting ways on topics that are important to our audience. And so um, we've done a couple of different videos uh, along different topics, one of which um, is on historical trauma, which is the idea that um, trauma and, and hardship experienced in generation, generations past actually carries forward into people uh, into the future. And so um, we had some researchers and professionals who talked about what that means to them at these professional development seminars, and then we kept cut it down into a three-part video series. So it's been an interesting um, it's been interesting working within the institution on those kinds of videos while also having my own channel where I have a little bit more creative freedom. Um, but I think universities need to get on the bandwagon when it comes to uh, educational video especially. There's a lot of opportunity um, and I've actually been a little bit sad that at VidCon, the biggest you know convention around online video, we haven't seen very many university people here. Um, and I think that's that's really a shame because there's a lot of opportunity for growth uh, in that area. And so I'm excited to kind of be at the forefront of, of that niche uh, and to kind of push that forward and, and see where that takes me. Cool. So for, we'll circle back to um, developmental enthusiast itself. Mm -hmm. Do you have any like goals for the channel? Like when you go and you make a video, what, what are you trying to do? Yeah. Um, every video is a little bit different. It, I kind of go a little more on inspiration. I'm not super regimented about it yet. <clears throat> I'm not super regimented about it yet, partly because um, there, there's this thing called a full-time job. Uh, <laughs> so time has been limited to really grow the channel in the way I'd like. Um, but what I would like eventually is for this channel to be a resource for people who are either teaching developmental psychology or for professionals in the field who have questions about, you know, I've got a client who's doing this, like what, what's the root of that? What does that mean? Um, or what are, what are these you know, early adverse experiences like abuse and neglect? Like what does that mean for the kids I'm working with? To be able to, to grapple with some of those issues and present research information, but also some practical um, expertise on that would be really valuable, I think, and that's where I'd like to kind of move eventually. Um, but I also see my use YouTube channel as an extension of sort of my overall brand, to use that term. <laughs> um, so I'm also an author. I've written about uh, early adversity and trauma in early childhood and what care providers can do to help kids who have experienced a lot of that, uh, those early life difficulties. And so I see YouTube as a way to 
again, sort of expand and grow an audience in a slightly different way and reach a different group of people than I would with just a written book. So um, I guess the, the goal is to continue to grow the channel, but uh, to always be cognizant of what is it that the people I'm, I'm thinking of as my audience, what is it that they need, what's going to be most useful to them. Nice, nice. Um, so, uh, so we talked about goals, we talked about what you're doing now, we talked about what you did back in the day. Mm -hmm. Um, you mentioned that you did a book. What's it called? Thank you. <laughs> uh, so I'm the author of a book called Bridging the Relationship Gap, uh, Connecting with Children Facing Adversity. So it's all about um, kids who've experienced a lot of early life hardship, um, things like abuse and neglect, or having a parent in the military, or having a parent who's incarcerated, uh, and, and what that means for kids and what that does to little kids brains um, and what we know about that from the science and the research and then also what is it that professionals who are working with kids on a day-to-day -day basis can do to help kids recover recover from those experiences and live really fruitful and healthy lives um, I think that's that's probably the best spiel for it <laughs> that I've done in a long time so nice um, I haven't asked this before um, of you mm -hmm. is it more targeted towards like the adults in the kids lives or is it more targeted towards like psychologists or like a healthy mix of both um, a little bit of both the, so the publisher I worked with primarily has a um, an audience that's early childhood like educators so people who are teachers of young children um, but I would say that it's also got information that can be valuable for parents and aunts and uncles and people who are, are in a child's life. Um, also for people like educators and social workers and mental health practitioners. Uh, I tried to keep it as broad in terms of use of the information as possible while also understanding that people want practical tips for how to work with a kid who's you know acting this way in front of me right now. Yeah. Um, and so I tried to balance both the research and the practical angle on it, but keeping in mind that a lot of people might benefit from it. Cool. And final question, do you have a sign off for your channel? No, I don't. I have I'm really boring. <laughs> Sorry, this is your opportunity. It's my opportunity to come up with a tagline. Oh no. Um, oh I got nothing. I'm on the spot. I'm not good on the spot. It's okay. Uh, Remember. I mean usually usually I just do sort of a a general thank you to the audience for like thanks for watching and I'll see you next time. Alright, perfect. Bye now. Bye.